A very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us for our midweek prayer service that happens every Tuesday from 6 p.m. It's a blessing and an honor to have you with us today, even as we pray and as we trust God in the area of the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, the English Standard Version. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Let us pray even as we usher in the worship team for a moment of worship and later on to continue with our prayers. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we are so honored and grateful, Father, to gather again online, Father, to pray, to trust in you, Father, to surrender our lives to you. Oh God, to confess our desire for you, oh God, to acknowledge, my Father, our hunger for you, King of glory. And today, my Father, we surrender our lives to you. We ask that you may refresh us as we pray. We ask that you may empower us as we pray, that you will fill us with your spirit as we pray, oh God. We commit, almighty Father, the entire service, oh God almighty, into your hands, asking that you may speak to us, through us, almighty Father, and to each and every individual, to your glory and to your honor, that even during the time of worship, O oh God, we shall experience with your power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and we believe. We give you praise and we thank you, Lord. We know you are here 
and we know you are going to speak to us and you are going to encourage us and you are going to challenge us, O oh God. And our lives are not going to be the same again, our Father. And so, Lord, we surrender to you, my Father. Receive our surrendered hearts, O oh God. Receive our surrendered spirit, dear Father. Our openness, O oh King of all glory, Jehovah. Oh, my Father, may it please you today, Jehovah. May it please you to pour yourself upon us, O oh God. May it please you, my Father, to minister to us. May it please you, O oh God, to move among us in a mighty way, to touch our lives, O oh God, to turn our lives around for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today, our focus, actually, our focus this week, we've been looking at the power of the Holy Spirit in our moment of weakness. And we've been believing God and trusting God for the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives in a mighty way. And we'll be looking at and we'll be looking at various aspects of how the Spirit of God is able to work in us and through us so that we can become the people that God wants us to become. And so today, as I alluded to this um, earlier, we are going to trust God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible says. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wow, such a demonstration of the goodness of God, of the love of God upon the disciples who were gathered together in the upper room, praying and waiting in obedience to the instructions that they were given by Jesus, as we read earlier, Acts 1 verse 8, where Jesus told them, let me begin from verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the end of the earth. And Jesus had spoken similar words in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49, where Jesus, after his resurrection, he came to his disciples and he told them that tarry in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high, the promise of the Father, that which the Father has promised, wait until you receive it. Because Jesus knew that for the disciples to be able to do exploits, for them to be able, for, for them to be able to to ext extend the kingdom of God and for them to be able to be a blessing even as a church was birthed in the day of Pentecost for them to be able to do what God intended for them for them to be able to for, for them to be able to accomplish what God had in store for them Jesus knew that they could not do it alone they could not do it by their own power because even Jesus we see the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus right from the time when he was baptized by John at the river Jordan. We see the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus, giving witness of the, of the person and the work that Jesus had been called to do. And we see the Holy Spirit working in the life of Jesus throughout. And even Acts chapter 10 verse 38, uh, Peter talks about Jesus being full of the power and, and being full of the Holy Spirit and going everywhere doing good. And so whatever Jesus did, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we are to be effective people, effective Christians, if we are to be an effective church, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need him working in our lives, empowering us, in filling us afresh so that we can walk in the Holy Spirit. We can follow his leading. We can follow his guidance. We can follow his instructions and we can be able to obey his voice because the only way we shall transform our world. The only way we shall affect our generations, the only way we shall influence our societies 
is by the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it by our own strength. We cannot do it by our own power. And that is why when the disciples were told by Jesus, study in Jerusalem, wait until you receive the power from God, the promise of the Father, they obeyed. And they went together, they tarried, they waited, they prayed, they trusted God, they confessed their sins. I mean, it was a moment of brokenness before God. And the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven. And it explains what happened and the Spirit came upon them. I believe this is a desire of God that as Christians, we, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit, that the church of Jesus Christ will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, this evening, as you have joined us, whichever timeline, we are going to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as it was prophesied by Joel in, in Joel chapter 2 where, where Joel spoke about a time when God will pour His Spirit upon all flesh. Yes, it started on the day of Pentecost and it has been continuing. Let us pray that God will pour His Spirit upon all flesh, upon all people, upon the church, upon our neighbors, upon believers, those who have been trusting God, even for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we are going to trust God. We are going to trust God. And we know that God is a good God. He desires to give us the Holy Spirit. He desires to, to walk in the Holy Spirit. He desires to operate in the giftings of the Holy Spirit. It begins when the Holy Spirit comes upon us when we surrender our control, when we tell him, Lord, have your way. Come and fill us afresh. Take over our lives. Break us where you need to break us and move in our lives in a mighty way. And so let us go before God and trust him for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Trust him for a new move of the Holy Spirit because it is a revival. When the Holy Spirit comes, it spells revival, not only for us, for the church, for the nation. Let's pray that those who are called of the name of Jesus, those who are called by the name of Jesus, those who are believers, those who belong to the household of faith, they shall be filled with the Spirit of God. We shall experience a new infilling. We shall walk in the power of God wherever we go. In our workplaces, the Spirit of God will so move among us and around us and in us to influence and affect situations and even decisions. That is the desire of God so that we may transform our world. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, that is a posture that we take this evening. That is a posture, oh God, that we come with before you, Jehovah God. Oh Lord, we surrender our lives to you. We open our lives to you, oh God. Oh, we remember when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, oh God, and he gave that powerful sermon, Jehovah. And those who are listening, Jehovah, they reach a point and they said, what shall we do? They were cut to the heart and asked, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be by baptized and you shall receive this gift. It is for you and for your children's children. Oh God Almighty, whatever stands in our way of experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, Father we come recognizing that for us to make a difference, that for us to do exploits for God, that for us to do exploits for the kingdom of God, that for us to fulfill the purposes of God in our generation, that for us to be able to influence our world, oh God, that for us to be able to be the light and the salt, Almighty Father, that for us to be effective Christians, oh God, we recognize, Jehovah God, that we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need Him in our lives, moving and working, my Father, affecting every facet of our being, oh Jehovah God, guiding us and leading us, my Father. But how can He do that without us surrendering? How can He do that without us allowing Him, dear Lord? And therefore, this day, oh my Father, we want to open our hearts to You. We surrender to you today, O oh God, and we say we are in need of the Holy Spirit, my Father. Forgive us, O oh dear Lord, where we have operated like we don't need the Holy Spirit, my Father, where we have lived, O oh Jehovah God, oblivious, O oh Father, of the work and the move of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord. May you forgive us, have mercy upon us. Any sin that stands in our way, O oh God, of experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, where the 
flesh has taken over, dear Father, where we have not been able, Lord Jehovah, to mortify the flesh, O oh God, and allow the Holy Spirit to have control. May you forgive us today in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God, for the Bible says we should walk in the Spirit, my Father, and when we walk in the Spirit, we, are not, we, are, we will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Today we are praying that you may help us, O oh God. We ask of your forgiveness, my Father. Pardon us, purge us today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Pour your Spirit upon us, O oh God. We need your Holy Spirit. We cannot be effective witnesses for you on our own, on our own power. We need the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we pray for ourselves as individuals. More of your Spirit upon us, O oh God. Our hearts are open, my Father. O oh, King of all glory, we surrender to you. We need you to fill us today, my Father, like the church, Almighty God. Oh, like the early church, Almighty Father. They experienced in feelings after in feelings, oh God, in their gatherings, Lord, I pray, Father, wherever we are gathered this day, Jehovah God, as individuals, as groups, my Father, as families, Jehovah, release your Holy Spirit upon us, dear Lord, like in the days of Cornelius, my Father, when they had Peter preaching, dear God, and their faith rose, oh dear Father, and they believed the message, oh God, and you poured your Spirit, Almighty Father, as a testimony that this is not just for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles, oh God, it is for the young and for the old, my Father, oh King of glory, oh Lord, release your Spirit today, we need your Holy Spirit, we desire your Holy Spirit, oh God, there is no revival without the move of your Spirit, there is no revival without the outpouring of your Spirit, there is no revival without a fresh, oh Lord, in feeling, oh mighty Father, feel us afresh, oh God, empower us, dear Father, equip us, oh God, to be your witnesses, mighty Father, this is our desire, oh God, this is our longing, oh dear Father, we are hungry for the Holy Spirit, oh God, do not pass us by, do not leave us the way we are, we recognize our dryness without the Holy Spirit, we recognize our ineffectiveness without the Holy Spirit, we recognize our unproductiveness without the Holy Spirit, oh God, oh we desire, we desire to walk in the Spirit, to move in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, oh Father, to follow the Spirit of God, to hear what He has to tell us, my Father, even in witnessing, oh God, we know we cannot witness effectively, Lord, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, my Father, pour your Spirit afresh upon us, that we may be effective witnesses in our neighborhoods, oh God, in our workplaces, in our surroundings, my Father, pour your Spirit upon your church, oh God, in the name of Jesus, remember your church, oh mighty Father, remember your church in this day and age, oh God, when the church has been accused, oh dear Father, oh God Almighty, of bad things, of evil things, oh mighty Father, when people have questioned the relevance of the church, oh God, in this day and age, oh remember mercy, oh God, from heaven pour your spirit, only you can do it, it is not a man-made thing, it is not manipulated, oh God, it is not made, oh mighty Father, here on earth, oh King of glory, open the heavens, open the heavens, and pour your spirit in a mighty way, pour your spirit in a mighty way, upon the young and the old, my father, upon sons and daughters, oh God, pour your spirit upon ministers, dear father, oh father, remember mercy, we need your Holy Spirit now more than ever before, that we shall be led of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, that the church of today, my Father, shall not be the church, O oh God, that is devoid of the power of God, but it shall be a church that is full of the power of God, my Father, that we shall not be the church, O oh dear Father, that has the knowledge, O oh mighty God, Jehovah, but lacks the power. O oh God, have mercy upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we look to you. We trust in you, O oh God. We depend upon you to fill us afresh, O oh God. To pour your spirit afresh on us, O oh God. In a mighty way, Father. I know, Lord, you can do it again, my Father. I know you are doing it right now, O oh God. As many as are desiring. As many as are longing, O oh God. As many as are hungry, Father. You are doing it. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, because it pleases you, O Father, when we ask of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, you would say one time that the earthly fathers, when their children ask them for bread, they don't give a stone. When they are asked for fish, they don't give a serpent. How much more will our Heavenly Father give us the Holy Spirit? Ask that ask. Father, we thank you today. We have asked for the outpouring. We thank you because we shall experience it. We thank you because testimonies, Lord, will be there of people experiencing your power and the move of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And the church will not be the same again. Individuals will not be the same again. Christians will not be the same again. We thank you and we honor you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you adoration. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Cause us to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor John, for taking us through that amazing session when we were looking at uh, revival in the Holy Spirit and asking that we will be filled again, we will be filled once more by the Holy Spirit and where we have become, um, where we have forgotten, you know, the ministry that He has in our lives. And this moment, we are going to look at desiring to walk in the gifts of the spirit of the holy spirit you know once once we receive christ into our lives the holy spirit resides in us and he resides in us to do a greater work and we're going to look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11 he says now to each one the manifestation of the holy spirit is given for the common good to one there is given the Holy Spirit a message it, to one there is given through the Holy Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Amen. So we see that the Holy Spirit does a greater work in us, and all these gifts that have been given to us are for the common good. But I'd like us to think about it in this way. You know, have we, I mean, do we have, have we come to a place where we have stopped desiring the gifts of the Spirit? Do we know the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us as individuals? You know, if you were to be asked today, what gift do you operate in? What gift has the Holy Spirit um, deposited in you? You know, for many of us, it has become something of, um, something of a long time ago, something that we don't even recall, something that we rarely pay attention to, you know, and these gifts are given to us for the, for the common good, for the kingdom of God, for the benefit of the, of the kingdom, you know, saying the message of wisdom, a message of knowledge, uh, gifts of healing, miraculous power. You can imagine walking in this gift. So it is good for us to be at a place where we desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's a time for us to search ourselves and search our hearts. You know, have we come to a place where the Holy Spirit has become, you know, when we look through our phone book, for example, we have these friends who we can point and say, wow, the last time I talked to this friend was ages ago you know has the holy spirit become like a long time friend that you have not thought about you have not checked up on you have not you know you have not processed and thought of what is his purpose in my life and today we are going to pray that the holy spirit 
spirit will reignite that desire, reignite that desire, reactivate those gifts in us so that we may, they may be for the benefit of the kingdom. You know, a message of wisdom, as you're praying for someone, you can be able to share a message of wisdom with them, a, a message of knowledge. You can also share a message of knowledge from God to your friend as you're praying with them, you know, to a family member who is in need of that timely word, to another you know, uh, faith has been given. You know, for, for us to excel in that gift of faith, believing in God for greater things. You know, even as last week we were trusting in God for breakthrough. This is a gift, a, a gift of faith, a gift of healing. You know, even in this time of, 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 of pandemic and disease, it is beautiful, a beautiful thing to walk in this gift of healing. You know, can you just imagine praying for someone and they, are, they, are, they receive their breakthrough of healing because you laid your hands on them. So it is good for us to again desire these fruits, I mean, sorry, desire these gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, and there are, so, and, and there, and there, and there are several others, you know, miraculous power, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongue, and interpretation of the same. And um, we'll come to a space and a place where we'll ask God that he would reactivate, that he would um, make those gifts come alive in us again, that he will re re reactivate through revival the desire for us to operate in these gifts because the kingdom of God is in need of those gifts, gifts of healing, gifts, gifts of word of knowledge and the word of wisdom for the glory and the honor of his kingdom. So let us go before God in prayer. We are going to ask God that he will forgive us for the times when we have ignored the ministry that the Holy Spirit um, does within us. You know, he's always calling us to tap into those deeper levels, to walk in obedience, even as he instructs us. You know, we can remember how Jesus walked under the, the, under the instruction of his father. He only did what his he saw his father doing. He only said what he had his father say. In the same way, we were given the Holy Spirit who reminds us of all truth, who guides us, who connects us to the head who is the body of who, who is Christ, you know, the head of the body of Christ. So we, we, we ought to remain connected to the Holy Spirit. We ought to remember you know, we ought to remember, we ought to remember that place when we heard his voice leading us and telling us, you know, this is the way that you should go. Leading us and telling us, pray for so and so. Remember this one in prayer. Encourage this one. Share this message of wisdom with your, with, with, with your neighbor. Share this word of knowledge. You know, we need to come back to that place and daily desire in obedience to walk in the Holy Spirit. So let us, let us go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this evening, thanking you for yet another time that you have given us, O oh Lord, to be in your presence, my Father, to pray, King of glory, to remind ourselves, O oh God, that you are with us. You will never leave us, neither will you forsake us. That once we received you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior of our lives, O oh God, that you deposited your Holy Spirit God, that does great work in us, that reminds us and teaches us all things that you have put in our hearts, King of glory, all things that you have spoken in your word, King of kings. Father, this moment, oh Lord, we take time, oh God, to just come back to that place of connection with the Holy Spirit. Come back to that place of walking in step with the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you may forgive us, O oh God, where we have come to that place of ignorance, O oh God, and disobedience and distraction by so many things in the world, O oh God, that have taken our focus away from the, the, the Holy Spirit who is in us, who desires to to to, to grow us, to, to, to connect us to you, O oh God, and to teach us all things and remind us all things. He's the counselor. He's the helper. And Father, Lord, I pray that you may teach us. You may teach us once more, O oh God, how to walk with you, O oh Lord. 
Father, I pray that you may help us to be humble before you, O God, to be obedient before you, because this is the only way that we will reconnect with you, O God. This is the only way, King of glory, that we will hear your voice, even as you're leading us and you're instructing us, O God. Help us, O Lord, not to be stiff-necked, O God, even as you whisper to us, O God, to draw us near through your Holy Spirit, O God. And Holy Spirit, even as we have prayed for revival, we pray that indeed, God, you may revive the gifts that you have deposited in your body, O God, to each individual, O God. I pray that you may revive the desire for us to walk in the manifestation of these gifts, O God, because they are so important to the body of Christ. They are so important in your kingdom, King of glory. They are so important, O God, to those that are perishing around us, King of glory. And I pray, my Father God, that you may reactivate the desire, my Father, to walk in the gift of the message of wisdom, the message of knowledge, to walk in the gifts of healing, in the gift of healing, to walk in the gift of prophecy, of miracles. Father Lord, I pray that indeed, O oh God, you may um, you may bring us back to that place, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I pray that you may help us to see the importance, O oh God, of these gifts. I pray that you may help us to see the importance that the gifts that you have deposited within us are to benefit your kingdom, are to benefit the people that are around us, are to benefit those who desperately need to hear your word, desperately need to see a move of God in their lives, desperately need to see a breakthrough, O oh God. God. I pray that King of Glory prophecies may arise amongst your children, O oh God. The gift of prophecy may arise, O oh God. I pray that the gifts of speaking in tongues may arise in your children and the interpretation of the same, my Father. I pray that the gifts of healing may arise, O oh God, that we may pray for each other, O oh God, and we receive healing and that you heal, O oh God, through us, O oh God. Father, Lord, I pray that indeed your message of wisdom, message of knowledge, oh God, will arise, oh God, that once more will be known as the body of Christ that walks and operates in the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray that you may remind us of the, of the early church in even as we read in Acts, O oh God, as your apostle, as, as your apostles um, walked in these gifts, O oh God, and they manifested these gifts, O oh God, for the glory and honor of your kingdom and for the growth, O oh God, of your church, my Father. I pray, God, that you may help us, O oh God, to be like the early church, O oh God, to even supersede, O oh God, and pray the King of glory, you may help us, my Father God, to bring our focus back to what you are doing because you're always doing something you're always moving, oh God. You always desire to lift up. You always desire to, to pursue souls that are perishing, oh God, and bring them to the kingdom, my Father. Father, Lord, I pray that King of glory, you may, you may um, um, cause us to come to that place, my Father God, of walking in step with the Spirit, oh Lord. Help us, my Father Lord, even when our flesh desires to distract us, help us to arise in the Spirit. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on you and to, and to say no to our flesh, to say no to the distractions, to say no to the worldly noise, oh God, that causes us to be far away from you, to that causes us to move far away from you, O oh God, and not to hear you, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord, we are, we are living in times of so much chaos, so much stress, so much um, anxiety, O oh God, but Lord, your kingdom is not in crisis. And Father, Lord, this moment we ask, O oh God, that indeed you may help us, Father, to tap into the Holy Spirit, that we may access these gifts, O oh God, to help us to to walk in you, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, to help us in these times, oh God, and these times of trouble, oh God. Thank you that you're the God that is ever present, our ever present help in times of trouble. And Holy Spirit, this moment, we continue to ask for revival. We continue to ask for a reactivation of these gifts. We continue to ask, oh God, that you may fill us again, that we may overflow, oh God, that we may overflow, my Father, to the point of walking walking in the manifestation of the gifts that you have deposited in the body of God. Help us, Father Lord, to read your word, to know that this, these are the gifts and, and you have given them to the body. You have given them freely to us. Help us to be once more um, desirers and seekers of your word, my God. 
We give you all the glory and all the honor. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're doing a good work. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're reviving. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're reactivating. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are drawing closer to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you never, you, you never forsake us, because you are always with us. You're always there to whisper a word of encouragement, to whisper a word of counsel, to whisper a word of help in our times when we feel we are pressured by so many things in this world, oh God. So we want to thank you. You and we want to ask, oh God, that you may have your way, have your way in our hearts, have your way, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are our helper, you are our teacher, you are our counselor. Thank you that you will teach us and you will remind us of all things that God has spoken to us, of the word that he has planted in our hearts. Father, Lord, I pray that our ears will be open to you. And once you speak to us, Lord, that we will obey and walk in line with you, my Father, Lord. So we worship you this evening, oh God. If there is someone who is watching, oh God, and they don't know even how how to access, even how to, they don't know about the Holy Spirit, they don't even know if they have the Holy Spirit in them or not, they're not even sure about their journey in salvation, oh God, I pray that this is their moment, this is the moment that they will take time to surrender and repent and ask that Jesus would come into their hearts, oh God. And even this moment, if you're watching and you, 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 you are not part of the body of Christ, I invite you to make this prayer that Jesus will dwell in your heart and that you will receive this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit. Just pray after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you as a sinner, acknowledging my sin. And Father, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. I ask, oh God, that indeed you may receive me into the body of Christ. I accept and acknowledge that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me on the cross. And by virtue of that death, I am raised up to be a child of God. And in this moment, oh Lord, I pray that you may write my name in the book of life. And I ask that Jesus, you may come and dwell in my heart. Come and reside in my heart. Come and transform me because I am ready and open to receive you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill me and fill my heart that indeed I may begin to walk in the manifestation and the power that the Holy Spirit um, has deposited in each of us in Jesus' mighty name. So if you have made that prayer, I pray that you get connected to, our, um, to there's a number at the bottom of the screen. If you can get connected, someone will reach out to you and they will pray with you and you will join a Bible-believing church. And um, this moment, even as we conclude the prayer, I pray that indeed you um, come to that place where we will continue to desire, continue to desire to walk in the Holy Spirit and continue to desire to be connected to him who gives us life. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for a time and session of prayer. And even this moment, I'd like to leave you with this benediction. I pray that the Lord will bless you and that he will keep you and that he will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and have a, a great week ahead.